What's that in the sky? Is it a bird? A plane? No, it's uh, another Bitcoin hard fork. Yes, yes, there's already another fork coming November 18th or block 481,824. Hey cadets, I'm Captain Crypto and welcome to Cryptonauts. Cryptonauts. Today we're discussing the controversial Segwit2x hard fork. Similar to the Bitcoin Cash hard fork in August, Segwit2x's main feature is to increase Bitcoin's maximum block size. Bigger blocks mean more transactions processed and cheaper fees, right? Well, to understand, we'll have to rewind a bit and look at the history. Back in the spring of 2017, there was a division in the Bitcoin community between the miners who wanted to scale with bigger blocks and the users and devs who wanted to scale by fitting more transactions into the current block size with an upgrade called Segregated Witness or SegWit. On the 23rd of May, a group of company executives and Bitcoin miners met to come to a compromise and resolve the scaling debate. The result of this conference was the New York Agreement, also known as Segwit2x. Instead of one or the other, bigger blocks or smaller transactions, Segwit2x proposes we implement both. Sounds simple, right? So why the controversy? You see, Bitcoin was actually designed not to change easily. If it could, any old government or corporation could change the Bitcoin network at will. To the Bitcoin community, a small group of corporate executives meeting behind closed doors to fundamentally change Bitcoin's protocol seemed like a giant middle finger to Satoshi's dream of distributed consensus. This would be like if everyone at a party took a vote on what kind of pizza to order, and eventually they decide on pepperoni. They call to order the pizza, and the pizza place says, Nope, you don't want pepperoni, you want Hawaiian. It's way better for you. Even if they are right you'd feel pretty pissed. And that's basically what's happening with Segwit2x politics. What about technical consequences? The Segwit part of Segwit2x has already been implemented. The main Bitcoin chain, referred to as Bitcoin Core, is already running Segwit. So at this point, the only unique proposition that Segwit2x really brings to the table is the 2x part, increasing the block size. And believe me guys, don't believe what they tell you. Bigger isn't always better. Bigger block sizes will mean that more transactions can fit into each block. This will mean cheaper fees, but this is a classic catch-22. Lower fees will result in users trying to send more transactions. And before you know it, the 2 megabyte block size will be filled up just as much and fees go right back up. The only way to keep up would be to increase the block size again and again and again until the blockchain itself grows to terabytes of data and, well, you get the picture. Imagine 20 years ago when everyone still used spinning disk hard drives. How do you give a hard drive more storage space? Increasing the block size would be like making the spinning platter wider and wider and wider. More platter equals more storage, all right? Obviously, that's not how it happened. Instead, we decided to make storage devices smaller and more efficient. This is just one potential consequence of implementing bigger blocks. We aren't accounting for potential bugs or exploits that could be opened up, since Segwit2x only has one developer, Jeff Garzik, working on the project. So what can we, the average users, expect to happen when the fork lands? Well, the first and most important thing to be aware of is something called replay attacks. If you've been researching Segwit2x, you've probably heard of replay attacks before. A replay attack? is an exploit that can occur when two forked cryptocurrencies allow transactions to be valid across both chains. Let's say Bitcoin forks into B2X and BTC. You want to send your new B2X into an exchange so that you can trade it. You create a transaction that says, send three coins to address Y. And then you sign it and broadcast it to the B2X network. The transaction circulates the B2X network and is eventually confirmed, transferring three B2X coins to address Y. But somewhere along the line, somebody out there sees your transaction data, copies it, and re-uploads it to the BTC network. Like somebody copying all your answers on a quiz. Some kind of sick financial plagiarism. Imagine you gave somebody a check and they duplicated it perfectly. Same signature, same amount, same recipient. And they could just go to the bank and cash two checks taking twice the amount of money from you. 
The result is that not only are your three B2X coins sent to address Y, but so are your three BTC. Replay attacks aren't really exploitable though. The uploader can't change details like the number of coins to send or the address to send them to. But of course, it's a flaw that can be abused, so knowing the human race, you can bet that someone will try to mess it up for everyone else. The danger for most people will be when they're trying to send their B2X to an exchange to trade, they could actually end up sending both their BTC and B2X to the exchange. So, how do you protect yourself from this? Well, you can't really. Without replay attack protection enabled, there's not much to be done. However, we thought of three options for you. Number one, HODL. Just send all your coins to a cold wallet before the fork and hold them there. Wait out the storm and eventually it'll become clear which chain is more popular. If you don't send any transactions, you don't have to worry about replay attacks. Number two, don't give a about one of the chains. If you don't care about the coins on the other chain, replay attacks don't matter to you. If you just keep using, say, the Bitcoin core chain, you could end up losing some of your B2X coins, but your BTC will still be fully in your control. In the immortal words of Rick Sanchez, the answer is, don't think about it. Number three, between now and the time of the fork, Segwit2x may add some method of replay protection. They already did earlier this month, but the developer of Segwit2x disabled it due to a security flaw. Classic Garzik. <laughs> if this ends up being the case, we'll post an update video with a tutorial on the coin separation process and link it right up here. Oh, 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 oh. Option number four is actually to create paper wallets, but that's kind of complicated, so we'll leave a link for you right down here and you can check it out and see if it works for you. All right, cadets, Captain Crypto here. And remember, hodl, secure your crypto, and may Vitalik and Satoshi be with you always. Till next time.